we live in a time when suffering and emotions are often dismissed, diagnosed, and drugged away. When the Savior was in the Garden of Gethsemane, suffering and agony that no mortal mind can even begin to comprehend, I believe he showed us a more perfect way to approach these life experiences. First, he went to his friends and expressed to them exactly what it was he was experiencing, saying, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Then he asked them to pray for spiritual strength, not necessarily for his spiritual strength, but for them to be spiritually strengthened. Because when we are spiritually strengthened, we are more capable of helping other people in the ways that they need us to. As he continued to pray, he pled with his father to help him. And if there was any other way to let him do this in a way that didn't require so much suffering, saying, take away this cup from me. But as is often the case, the answer to that prayer was, there is no other way. And although his father couldn't intervene and take away that ordeal from him, he could send an angel to strengthen and support him during that time. I often wonder who that angel was. Was it somebody the Savior knew well before he came to the earth? Was it someone who understood what it was like to endure deep suffering? Or was it simply someone who loved the Savior enough to stand beside him and be there with him as he went through the rest of that trial? Either way, the Savior gave us the perfect example of acceptance when he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I've often misinterpreted that scripture to be sort of a lift yourself up by your bootstraps and carry on as though nothing is wrong. But the Savior doesn't want you to go into denial to prove your righteousness or your faithfulness. The only thing he wants you to prove is him. And the way to do that is to bring your weaknesses to him to see if you really can heal those. So I have a challenge for you this week. As you're going throughout each day, notice what sensations you're feeling. Maybe you'll suddenly feel it in your gut or your breathing gets shallow. Or maybe you get that tightness in your throat or your mind starts to race. Whatever it is, just stop. Stop. Take a big breath and ask yourself, where is this coming from? Is this sadness? Is it fear or shame? I think you'll be surprised at how basic the emotions are that most of these sensations come from. But whatever it is, once you've pinpointed it, say it out loud. Just say it. This is sadness. Once you've done that, you're prepared to take it before the Lord in prayer or in applying the principle of Ho'oponopono, as I have demonstrated in a previous video, saying thank you for showing me this part in me that is weak. Forgive me. I love you and I'm grateful. As you do this, I believe you will begin to see even more healing in your life because the Savior will be able to fulfill the promises he's made to you, of making weak things strong and turning for your good those things that are trials in your life. But he can't do that if you don't take that first step. Like the Savior in Gethsemane, your Father can't send angels to minister to you if you don't ask for help in the first place. But let me make it clear. The Lord doesn't love you in spite of your weakness. He suffered in Gethsemane out of love for you because of your weaknesses. He's not waiting for you to be better or stronger. The only thing he's waiting for is for you to lay these weaknesses and these sorrows and these fears at his feet, at the altar of faith, and sacrifice them there so that he can apply the miracle of the atonement, which is to take things that are weak and broken and make them at one with his perfection and his wholeness and his strength. 
I hope you take this challenge and I hope you remember that no matter what, you are loved exactly as you are right now in this very moment.